I, I don't want you to turn to it, but in Deuteronomy chapter, I think it's chapter 7, or chapter, yeah, chapter 7 says, Therefore now the Lord your God is faithful, and he keeps his covenant and mercy to a thousand generations. A thousand generations. Yeah, that means he thinks of you, and then he thinks of Billy a thousand times over. He thinks that you go, what, what, I keep messing up, but God's going to use your mess up to learn, to grow, and to teach others not to do the same. You see, there's a move of God that God wants to do, but you might be holding it up. You see, you could be a roadblock or a road. It's up to you. You could be the roadblock and stop the move of God. You see, no, no, no. You see, somebody did something so that David Wilkerson could help start a ministry that was going to change the world. Somebody planted, somebody had a seed for Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie, and now we have a worldwide ministry, a thousand generations. You see, here, David didn't know how much God wanted to bless him. Do you know how much God wants to bless you? I don't think you get it. I, I pray that you walk away from this church feeling, man, there's a blessing in store for me. First Chronicles chapter 17, verse 27. It says, and now it, it has pleased you to bless the house of your servant so that it will continue forever before you. For when you grant a blessing, here it is, O oh Lord, it is an eternal blessing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you, Lord. We pray for your hand to be upon the word. And I pray that, God, I would do you proud to minister how you'd want me to minister and to say the words that you want me to say. There's people here that are anticipating something that will help them in their current condition. Lord, we need a word. We need a move of God. And I pray that I won't be that blockage. I won't be that dead end for some po folks, but I will be the... Uh, uh, able to assist people to go to the next level, to live at the next level, and to know that you want to move, but you want to move through us. We thank you, Lord, and we carefully give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, everybody says, I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm blessed. How about you? Come on. You may be seated. Thank you, Caleb. Amen. This, this, this scripture stood out to me when it said, eternal blessing. This is now, let me give you a little backdrop of the story for a minute. David went through a journey of, I don't know if you know the story of David, but he went through a journey to get to his promise. And before he got to his promise, he was forsaken. Uh, there was uh, thousands of people after him. He was abandoned. He was homeless. Huh, you know, he was homeless. He had no home. Matter of fact, he lived in a cave. And in, in all that time, he knew that he was the crown king but he was living in the cave. Do you know that God has a blessing upon your life, but your, your condition might not look like your promise right now? Your condition might not look like your future right now, but how many know God is preparing you in the cave? He's preparing you in your circumstance. Whatever that is, in your need, God wants to build faith. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm in need. God, where are you? No, he wants to build something more than just give you finances. He wants to give you faith to feed you for a lifetime. Can somebody say amen? You see, sometimes we get stuck we're, we're, we're not in that place where we think beyond our circumstances. And here David says, when you bless, you bless with an eternal blessing. And so he was there thinking, how are you going to bless me? Because he got a word from the Lord that God was going to bless his children's children's children. He didn't know how deep the blessing was. You don't know how deep your blessing was. I didn't know how deep my blessing was. And I know my, my legacy is going to continue as I see my daughters get to know the Lord and as I see them being used, and even my son. I don't know what my grandchildren are going to do. But because they had a grandfather and because they had a grandmother and because we stood in the faith and because we trusted the Lord, one day they're going to be blessed and prosperous. Maybe they'll have a way bigger ministry than we'll ever have. But because the Lord has blessed my lineage, because the blessing is beyond your four corners of your walls. You see, we're so used to living here. They're not used to living here. We're so used to living in the need, but you're not used to living in the provision. 
You're so used to living in poverty, you don't know that God's going to provide all your needs according to your riches and glory. You're so used to being, feeling sorry for yourself, you're not used to proclaiming your promise over your problems and say, God, I know you're going to come through. See, I want to talk to some folks here today that are used to living down here. I pray that I'll be able to move you to the next level. To accelerate you to the next level so that you can start living your best life ever. Now, you might give me a sad story after service and tell me, Pastor, you don't know my condition. You don't know, you know, I was born from a drug addict family. You don't know my poverty-stricken issues. You don't know my handicap. And you don't know my, what I struggle with, my vices. And, and I'm here to let you know, and I'm here to serve you some good news, that you're not alone. Do you, you probably think you're the only one that struggles that way. You're in a house full of struggle. But some of us are excelling, and some of us are stuck. Why? I'm going to teach you here today why. Is that okay? You see, David didn't know that his blessing was an eternal blessing. He thought his blessing was just going to be an earthly kingdom. But he didn't know that his lineage was going to carry on forever. To the point where his lineage led to Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. So his promise wasn't just for his sons. It wasn't for his, the seat, the throne that he was sitting on. But it was for God's throne in heaven. That his lineage was going to come through the, the, line, the line of Judah. Jesus, the lily of the valley, was going to be a part of his lineage. You see, he never knew that Jesus, the Savior of the world, was going to be a part. He said he had a promise. David didn't know. And in 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 16, this is when he found out. It says, David went in and sat before the Lord. Now, can somebody give me a chair real quick? Somebody just real quick, just give me a chair. The fastest person that could give me a chair, give me a chair. Come on, run, 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 run. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to use a chair real quick just to kind of demonstrate. How many have ever been... In the posture of gets wondering why life has been so hard to you. How many have ever been there? You sat down in depression and you and you were just trying to think about why is it so hard for me to get to the next level? Why am I the only one going through? You're not the only one. I'm just trying to help you here today. Because isolation is a devil's playground. So if you're isolated today, that's where he plays with your brain and it doesn't allow anybody else to interject a thought. Or you didn't even let the Holy Spirit to come in because the devil is bombarding all your time. He's getting you on YouTube and Facebook and all this. Is, you're comparing yourself with others that are succeeding and you don't see yourself succeeding. But I'm here to let you know God gives us the ability to succeed. He has it in your DNA. You just haven't tapped into it. You're living down here, but I'm telling you, you need to live up here. You see, 1 Chronicles 17, verse 16, this is David, went in and sat before the Lord. He didn't raise his hand. He didn't, he didn't jump and nothing, nothing. He was just pondering on how God is so good. And the Lord, it says, and prayed, who am I, O Lord God? And what is my family that you have brought me to this far? And then he says, and now, O oh God, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty. Now, there's a difference between the dynasty and the legacy. A legacy is something that we live when, some, when we die, and it's something that continues on. But a dynasty goes on with your family. When your family takes position, that becomes a dynasty. So he has, his family was taken on. Now, he's had a dynasty, and he says, you speak as Though I were somebody great, very great, oh, Lord. See, God speaks over you. He says, you are great. But when we're living down here, he can't get a word in because you're down here. You're, you're depressed. You're holding on to your old words, your old promises. You're reminded of the pain of the past. And so you can't move beyond the level that you're in because you're reminded, maybe the people around you remind you of your pain. They go, oh, you're, you know, they'll tell you things. But 
for some reason, you're always sitting down there. But, but there's something, this posture of David was different than the posture of somebody that's depressed. Because we can still use the same seat of depression. That same seat could be your, your seat of praising and thanking and offering uh, worship to the Lord. See, when he sat down because he was in awe. I remember sitting down many times. I just broke down in tears and I said, God, you're so good to me. I never thought that you would use me to be a pastor. I was a little kid on drugs, doing things, messed up my brain, grew up with a family full of drugs, just didn't know my life was going to pass this, this, this far. Never thought that I would even be behind this pulpit. And here I'm sitting down, that I believe that it's an eternal blessing. You know why? Because the people that are ministered to will eventually find eternal life. And because I am obedient to the calling of God, my blessing is an eternal blessing because many are going to go to heaven because of my obedience. So as I'm sitting with you, we're all sitting together. This actually feels pretty good right here. <laughs> Standing for an hour, you know how it is. You guys can't even stand for five minutes. You're all like, that's uh, uh, uh. five minutes of standing. Worship the Lord is so hard. You know, here I am standing for an hour and a half, taking a break with you. Amen. Hallelujah. But when God calls an individual, it's not a small calling. You, you think you're, you're called just to, to get a little job and to make a little money. and No, there's much more than that. You, when God looks at you, he looks at greatness. Now, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to think here. I know it's a difficult thing to think here because of your problems. You remember the Joseph story last week when I shared that he was in a pit, the palace of prison? It was probably hard that he was going to be the ruler of the nation. He was going to be right under Pharaoh ruling the nation. It was hard to believe that in that state. But how many know when God puts something in your spirit? See, when God puts something in your spirit that says, you know what, there's something great about you. You keep talking yourself out of the greatness. That's the problem. You ever been taking a shower and you think about all your problems at the same time? Some of you guys like to sing in the shower. How many, like, how many singers do we have in the, that you like to sing? You got, you know, you, you're just like, you know, singing opera in the showers. So you're just, ah, you're singing. But sometimes in the shower, people cry. They cry in the shower. Why? Because nobody can see their tears. They're getting, they're getting washed by the water. You're there in the shower thinking about all the problems. But see, if, let, let me give you an example of living here and living here. If you're living here, you're in the shower crying while the water's running on you. And you're thinking about all your problems. But if you live here, you would think of the water being the shower of God's blessing upon your life. That the, the latter will be greater than the former. That you call, that God has called you to be the head and not the tail. That I can rejoice in your goodness and your faithfulness. See, there's a difference between somebody living here and somebody living here. You don't, you don't have joy because all the good things are happening to you. You have joy because all the things that are coming to you. You see, some people struggle. David knew. He understood. He was sitting there. My God, I didn't know. I, was, I thought I was just going to have a kingdom, but you gave me a dynasty. I, I didn't know that it was just going to be the, a, an eternal blessing. And so you don't know what's going to come after you. You see, David learned a lot of lessons, but brought him to a place where the Bible says he did everything that, the God, that God called him to do. You guys want to learn a lesson from David? I want, you, I want to look at you. Do you want to learn a lesson from David? So David, David can relate to all of us. He was a, he was a, a killer. If you, I don't know if you, anybody killed anybody here, but I want to pray for you. But he's also a liar. He was a manipulator. He was a, a, a lust monster. Come, you guys don't believe me. Read the Bible. You'll read it, right? But something about David, he learned his lesson. And 1 Chronicles chapter 15, 1 Chronicles chapter 15 says this in 13. Because you, you Levites did not carry the ark the first time, and the anger of the Lord, our God, burst out against us, we failed to ask God how to move 
it properly. Now, this is a lesson that he learned. And now he's, now he's moving forward. And he's saying, okay, God, moving forward, we're going to do things right. So if you know the story of the Ark of the Covenant, right, that's where the two uh, tabernacles or two, uh, the, 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 the Ten Commandments were, and that's where the, uh, the showbread was, that, that's where everything was, and it was made out of full gold, and it was solid gold. It's not the hollow gold that we get nowadays, amen, that hollow gold. It's a full, solid gold. They said that the tabernacle weighed about almost 300 pounds besides the poles that were lifting up. So it was a heavy thing to hold. And so David thought of taking a shortcut because it was too hard to hold this tabernacle, bringing it from city to city through the desert. So he had an idea. He says, let's make a cart and let's, let's get two bulls to carry the cart. Hey, I just had a new idea. Let's move the glory of the Lord on modern tools. And so he began to just move that. And then this man came about and began to say, wait a minute. He was one of the guys and he was there and he was, you know, just making sure that the, 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 uh, the cart was moving straight. And then all of a sudden the bull moved and the ark was about to fall and he grabbed it. And the Bible says he died instantly. And when he died, I, I asked the question, why did he die? He was doing a good thing, right? He was, you know, he was, you know, being obedient to his leader. And he was just doing it while, you know, David was dancing in the front and singing songs. This ark was being moved, and the Uzziah was there, and he tried to stop it from falling, and the anger of the Lord fell on him, and he died. The question mark from my mind was, why? I asked, why? And, and I always ask, why do innocent people go through bad things? You ever ask that question? Why do people that are doing good, man, they, they suffer? And, and, and guess what? When I begin to pray over the scripture, the Lord spoke to me about it. How important that we move with God, not against God. Because here, he thought it was easier to do this work this way rather than sacrifice and do it the right way. See, the culture that we live in is a convenient culture. We want modern tools to help us worship the Lord. We don't like to sing. We like to listen to songs. We don't, you know, we don't want uh, an atmosphere that we need to create the atmosphere. We want the atmosphere to be created for us. The, the, the culture of convenient. But here, God gave him a, a, a remedy. He says, if you're going to do this, do this right. See, here in 1 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 7, this is where the story continues. And Uzziah died in the presence of the Lord, and that place was called Perez Uzzah, which means a burst of, of, against Uzzah. It was, it was something that was like, it didn't even make sense. But the Lord showed me that when a person doesn't move in the, in the pattern and in the way and the obedience of God, other people will get hurt behind it. He showed me that our children will be affected by our obedience. You see, Uzzah was just a, a, a recipient of David's disobedience. Do you know that all this time that you've been living, people are suffering because we made bad choices? Because we had a bad example? Because we, we showed the wrong way to get an answer? Maybe even our kids heard us lie instead of lie in front of them. And they thought, well, then if my mom and dad could lie, maybe I could lie too. Is this microphone on? Come on, I just turned the corner a little bit. Is that all right? I, I know I was getting you there, but I turned the corner a little bit. Why? Because I want to make it real. I want to make it adaptable for where you're at right now. Because I could be one of those guys too. Lied in front of our kids. Manipulated. Thought this was the easier way. Why don't I just do it this way? This is a better way. But see, David learned something. That his decision is going to affect the people after him. 
So when you have that understanding that God has a blessing on your life, an eternal blessing, that the people around you are going to be affected by your decision, it is important that we learn right now at this moment while you're in church, you understand that this is a moment, a turning point in your life, that you will know that this is important, that I keep my heart right with God, that I hear the voice of God, that I will not move until I hear what God has for me. You see... David was a man that was learning how to hear the voice of God. He understood that that modern tools can't bring the presence of God. Flat screens, lights, smoke. Today, the guys surprised me and put smoke up on the stage. And I said, hey, guys, we have a fire. He goes, no, Pastor, just smoke from the back. (laughs) Like, oh. But that doesn't bring the presence of God. It just brings a, a cool atmosphere. But it doesn't bring, do you know that the four walls does not bring the presence of God? This gymnasium obviously doesn't bring the presence of God, right? right the, this city doesn't bring the presence of God. You know what brings the presence of God? Is our hunger for God. Do, do you know when there's the move of God in this place? When people are hungry for God. Let, let me give you an example. You're willing to drive And I've heard of people driving across town to go to their favorite restaurant. They'll cross seas, deserts, they'll cross places and cities to go to that specific restaurant to enjoy that certain kind of food. How many? That's hunger. Right? Just yesterday, I was across town, and my wife says, I'm hungry. And then I said, what do you feel like eating? Right, we, 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 we eat according to our feelings, right? We, we, we eat because we feel something. My wife felt like Chinese food, so I'm like, okay, well, let's go. Amen. So we, we drove across, because there was a, a ton of restaurants nearby me. Like, there's a taqueria right here. There's this, this, there's that. There's sushi over here. He goes, I want my Chinese. And I said, oh, okay. I go, and I was trying to convince her on the way, but she was determined to get Chinese food. So we crossed towns and went through valleys and deserts. (laughs) All kinds of mind trips. There's better food than Chinese food. Come on. But she wanted that Chinese food. And when she got there, she finally got her Chinese food and watching her smile. You know, and that's what hunger will do for you. See, when somebody calls a prayer meeting, would you just cross the city and drive there at 6 in the morning to pray with those people? Oh, did I give you from here to here? Because that's a whole other level of thinking. Oh, you don't know, Pastor, because I got to have my beauty sleep. And it's hard to get up that early, but you'll get up early to go to Disneyland. Right, Caleb? Hallelujah. Not the clown on Caleb, but he'll get up early for prayer too. Amen. But we'll get up early for different things. But when it comes to hunger, it will get you up early. It'll get you places. It'll even get you to church early. It'll even get you to the altar call. It'll get you places that normally you won't go, but because of your hunger, you will go there. And guess what begins to happen? A move of God moves not only around you, but moves through you. Because of the hunger that you got, God is drawing you to the well. And begin, you begin to call upon the name of the Lord. And guess what begins to happen? God will give you your next step. How many of you have ever tried to figure things out? Man, it's just trying to figure out my problems. Man, my kids are running wild. My husband and my wife are crazy. Uh, you know, my job, I hate my job. How many of you ever try to figure things out? Man, I can't. My landlord, he's horrible. You know, just a lot of things. You're trying to figure things out. Why don't you try living from here to here by doing this, by drawing closer to the Lord? Ooh, that's new to you? Maybe that's something you could start doing. Maybe fasting. Oh, Lord. Oh, I mentioned the word fasting. You guys got all hungry right now, right? Lord, not fasting. You know, God, I need my pan dulce in the morning. I need my meals every week. Do you know fasting is a spiritual discipline that helps us say no to sin? Sometimes if we can't say no to food, we have a hard time saying no to sin. Because you're, the, the Apostle Paul says, I buffet my body, not buffet it. Hello, somebody. 
We buffet our body. We go to the buffet every day. Come on, somebody there at the buffet, hometown buffet. Let's go, right? He said, no, 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 no. It's not, not, we're gonna, not going to buffet our body. We're going to buff it. It's a different word. Discipline our body. He said, no, you ain't going to eat that carne asada today. You're not going to eat that chicken that's so good right now with barbecue sauce all over it and that rib that's so been tenderized for a whole week. And I, You're not going to eat that. But if you can get past that, smelling everybody eating their food, you just walk around. And, and then one discipline leads to another. He says, you know what, instead of their eating, let me go in my prayer closet and begin to pray. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I should get into my word. There's some, a hunger begins to change. His praises shall continually be in my mouth No matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Father have your way in this place You be glorified in it all Come on let's raise it together, say I will bless the Lord at all times And His praises and His shall continue leaving No matter what I see, no matter what I see, no matter what I see As long as I'm breathing Oh yes, I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing Hey, oh yes, I'm breathing Come on, say, oh magnify Let us exalt Him. That's the reason why we're here tonight. 